Welcome to the show. I'm Tosh Taylor. And I'm Jenna Morton. And today we get to talk about one of the best parts about winter, Riverview Winter Carnival. And we are thrilled to have Ash back on the show with us. Hello, Ash. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, we are so happy that you were able to join us this year again to talk about all the fantastic things happening for Winter Carnival. And uh, the folks who are watching us online, you can see that uh, most of us are are camped inside for this episode. But Ash looks like he's out on the uh, the look off there in Mill Creek, which is just absolutely stunning. Yeah, I, I, you know, this time of the year, I love like using those those photos uh, just to get people pumped. And honestly, looking at the the photo of myself out there, it's I'm pre- getting pretty excited for the festival. Yeah, and you guys got some snow, which <laughs> which you've been waiting for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've been uh, asking folks to do the uh, the snow dance for a couple of weeks, and it's coming through. Um, been asking folks to do the uh you know the the dance to get the uh, temperatures to go down and uh somebody must still be dancing because it's it's going to be a cold one this weekend <laughs> it is yes, <laughs> yes. yeah you, you can't I mean that's one of the, the the joys maybe of planning a winter carnival right you really you have to just roll with whatever punches mother nature throws at you and that's one thing I mean certainly the town has been doing this for quite a while now this is the 40 40- 48th 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 winter carnival yeah since 1975 it's it's uh it's incredible that uh you know that the community has been coming together for 48 years to embrace the cold and connect with neighbors in the dead of winter it's yeah it's since 1975 that is fantastic we were just talking to a friend the other day who was telling us that she remembers um, marching in a parade down Coverdale in the freezing cold when she was a little kid. <laughs> yeah, that uh, I'm not sure when they stopped uh, doing that parade, but yeah, I've seen old newspaper clippings from that. All of the uh, community groups would get together, put in a float. There was a mascot too, as well. I think of a, a snowman, and I think it was a moose at one point as well. Oh, yeah, it's fun. It, the carnivals changed so much over the years. Um, we're you know we're already actually starting to think a little bit about the fiftieth and what that looks like. And yeah, it's it's kind of neat that it's evolved so much over over the years and over the decades. Mm, that's going to be so fun to see what you guys come up with in a couple of years. But right now we're talking about this year and what's happening for Riverview Winter Carnival for 2023. And of course, you guys have just a fantastic mix again of things indoors and outdoors. What are some of the things that you'd like to to highlight for folks? I had a really hard time, honestly, looking through like we have over 40 events. There's 25 businesses that are offering uh, warm winter specials. And we have a couple of promotions that are kind of running uh, over the festival, such as like the Snow Sculpture Challenge, the Geocaching Challenge. Uh, Eastgate Academy is uh, hosting um, a uh, snowflake hunt. So honestly, I had a really hard time, but uh, I think what I'm most excited about to, to share is uh, the fireworks are back, Ignite is back. Uh, that's uh, Friday, February 3rd, um, where you know the community is gonna come out, gonna have free hot chocolate, uh, skating on the oval. And if you haven't been to those fireworks, they're really spectacular. They shoot them off from the top of the hill. So you're kind of right under them. It's, it's really awesome, very magical. Um, Really excited uh, to have, uh, we have two different uh, community organizations that are offering um, a craft uh, market uh, type of event. So there's one hosted by the Lions on um, the first Saturday, so Saturday, February the 4th. And the Funny Biosphere region in partnership with the Riverview Art Center, they're hosting an indoor market um, at the Riverview Art Center, 400 White Pine on the second Saturday, so February 11th. And uh, if you stick around uh, after the market, uh, the Riverview Arts Center, they're also presenting a concert that evening. So it's a group from Halifax, uh, JJ Roots, 
um, they're coming into town to uh, to play for the community. So those are just a couple of new things. Um, some old favorites, of course, the snow sculpture challenge. I mm -hmm. kind of already mentioned that. Uh, really excited to see what folks come up with again this year. There's all kinds of snow to work with. Uh, so we're hoping folks will get out this weekend to create uh, something based on the uh, town's 50th anniversary. And uh, voting will start February 6th and run for uh, most of the week and prizes up for grabs. Really what exciting. are the prizes, by the way? Because I was hearing some rumblings of some pretty amazing things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so the, the grand prize, uh, we are doing a, like a getaway again to uh, Fundy National Park. Uh, we've rented uh, a yurt for somebody to enjoy like a two night stay. Uh, we threw in a gas card to get down there as well as a Parks Canada, um, like one of their discovery passes, which is good for any park across Canada. Um, and I believe there is a, I can't remember the value, but there's a gift card to Bob Sports Services and uh, rental, like a snowshoe rental. So once you get down there, you can hit the trails using those. Wow, fantastic. Yeah. I, I love to, with the snow sculpture contest that you guys started, this is the third year now. Yeah. So part of what I love about it though, is these sculptures last, right? Like once they're built, you know, whether families decide to do it, you know, kind of leading up or the first weekend, or even they see neighbors and then they decide to do it, even if they haven't officially entered the contest, they stay up for some of them for weeks I found in the past and yeah. you get to go around and like walk the streets or drive the streets of Riverview and there's just this fun snow art everywhere. Yeah and it, it's I think the biggest uh, like the feedback we get to is families really enjoy like it doesn't matter what age you are even you know teens people are really into it and uh, it's a it's a great um it's just a great way to spend time with your family and your friends or neighbors, um, you know, talking about what do you want to make and then actually going out and, uh, and executing it. Um, but yeah, we get a lot of feedback from uh, parents and grandparents that, you know, they're really excited to, to spend time um, doing that with their kids and their grandkids. Yeah, I know we've certainly enjoyed walking through the streets and checking out some of the, the great things. And then uh, the town puts up photos of the people who, of the sculptors who've officially entered the contest. Yeah. So we, uh, we asked folks to take a photo of their creation and uh, submit it uh, online. And then we take all of the photos and enter those into a map. So um, even if you're not able to get out and drive around or walk around and check them out, you can take a look at them on the uh, online digital map. Awesome. And then the voting of course is all online. So you can vote yes. for your friends. Yeah, perfect. Yes, and uh, we have prizes for folks that vote as well. So we're trying to, you know, trying to spread the love and uh, ensure that, you know, even if you're not able to get out and uh, make a snow sculpture, um, even if you just have a chance to vote for your favorite, uh, you'll be entered into a random draw for some for some prizes there too. Wow. Mm, that's that's awesome. amazing. Yeah. Holy. I Speaking of snow art, last year was just absolutely amazing in that you had two people come up and make art on the snow at the look off there in Mill Creek. What can people expect around that this year? Are we going to are we going to have the same thing happen? I'm crossing all my fingers and toes. <laughs> uh, Matt uh, Robinson and Sheldon Benoit. Yes, they're uh, two snowshoe artists from Nova Scotia. We do have them booked. Uh, I can share with you as of right now, unfortunately, they are not going to make it this weekend just due to the weather. But we're hoping that uh, they'll be uh, visiting us next weekend. So um, stay tuned to socials. As soon as we know that they're coming, we'll we'll let folks know. Uh, the design, I've seen it. It looks really cool. They've incorporated the 50, 50th into it as well. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of tricky because it's got to be perfect conditions. Like it can't be too windy. It can't be, you know, snowing or raining. Um, I didn't anticipate that last year that the wind would be an issue. But uh, yeah, 
it can't be windy at all. Otherwise, like as they're creating it, the snow would just cover it back up. So yeah, we're crossing all of our toes and fingers that uh, they'll be here on the second weekend. My Same thought was, Creek. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, my thought was, uh, would the dam even be frozen yet? Because it has been so mild up until this weekend. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we uh, luckily are, our, uh, our, um, my coworkers with the uh, fire and rescue, they go out and uh, they check out if it's safe enough for them to be out on on the ice. But yeah, that's that's certainly been a concern of mine too over the last few weeks. Wondering, okay, is it is it going to be a go or what's going <laughs> on here? But Mother Nature's coming through on on that piece. So mm -hmm. I'm just uh, hoping that it all works out. It's kind of part of the fun of the magic of it too, though, right? You you really do need to have so many things just line up perfectly, and then it was. It was spectacular to see it last year and to see people, the best was seeing people who didn't know it was happening, just like yes. walking past and then like stopping at the look off and being, what is that? There's this beautiful artwork on the snow, on the ice. It's just absolutely captivating. I think it was really, it was a cool opportunity for them last year as well, because in the past, uh, when they were doing other designs, they were just doing it on their own out on you know a lake or a pond um so they never had the opportunity um to interact with folks that were appreciating their art so i think i think they're really excited to come back and uh and uh do that piece for us and uh interact with folks and uh answer questions for as long as they can uh, stand around i was kind of surprised too actually last year they, uh, it's, it's physically exhausting. I can't remember the number of steps they, they told me, I don't remember the exact number, but they, I had to, uh, I had to drive them out to, uh, the parking lot because they're just, it's just so much walking to create those pieces. Yeah. And perfectly placed steps as well, which I'm, I'm not a very good snowshoer, but I know that's difficult. So, <laughs> which yes. is why I'm not a very good snowshoer. So, <laughs> Not coordinated. Uh, but speaking of snowshoeing, let's stay on that topic because there are some snowshoeing events that are coming up for people during, is it 12 days of Winter Carnival? 10 days, Friday, 10 days. Okay. February 3rd to the 12th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's all kinds of uh, different, uh, different types of events happening um, around snowshoeing, I should say. So we do have a, a guided series uh, with uh, Wild Wisdom Adventures. Uh, they're going to be uh, offering guided tours Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or sorry, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday evening. Uh, they all start at 630. You do have to pre-register um, and we're offering free rentals if you don't own a pair of snowshoes. So for folks that want to get out and try it or, you know, they want that guided experience, that's a perfect um, uh, event to partake in. Um we're also offering a morning snowshoe uh, Monday morning, and it kind of it uh, we decided to do it Monday morning because there's a full moon Sunday night, mm -hmm. uh, so that's going to be happening at seven o'clock. And again, you got to pre-register for that. All the details are online. Uh, Farmer Brown's they're offering a uh, you know uh, a snowshoe poker run. It's their second annual. Uh, last year they sold out, uh, at about 120 hands. I think they're looking to increase that number. Um, and they have some really great cash prizes, swag prizes. So if folks are interested in that, definitely check that out. It was a lot of fun last year. Um, and in general, just snowshoeing, like, for example, like we just talked about, uh, going out to the lookout in Mill Creek any of the events that are held outdoors, if folks want to bring their snowshoes and check out the parks um, or get on the trails, we're really highly encouraging that. One of the events that really stands out for me in the lineup, and I think it's probably because I have such a lovely memory of the time that you and I, you took me out snowshoeing on the trail. Um, but on Tuesday night, there's a snowshoe or just a walk on the Dobson Trail where you can go out to the campfire with I think it's the scouting troop that does that one yeah and that just so it's like the idea of being out at the fire pit in the snowy evening with the campfire and the s'mores and everything is just screams winter carnival to me 
Oh yeah, it, it's the the Riverview Scouts have been a long time partner of uh, Riverview Winter Carnival. Um, yeah, the the event's huge. There's so many folks that really look forward to um, getting that first fire pit, and it's only I want to say 800 meters from the uh, parking lot, so it's it's maybe about a 10 minute walk, and uh, they're actually they're partnering partnering sorry with the uh, Riverview Girl Guides and the Riverview Art Center. Um, we're not 100% sure if the Art Center will be able to provide a performer just, again, because of the cold, but we're really hoping uh, that's gonna come together. And you're right, like once you get there, like it's so nice to be like amongst snow covered trees with the stars overhead. It's, it's a really beautiful event that they put on year after year after year. Yeah, and all still actually within town limits, which is I I just I'm always amazed by the fact that that you can still see the stars while in town, and I I think a lot of people uh don't have a chance to appreciate that, and Winter Carnival does help people see that mm -hmm. even even when you have the fireworks at this at the Toboggan Hill, you're in town, but you still get this wonderful view. Yeah, it's I one of my favorite things to do in the winter is just go out on the Dobson or go out in Mill Creek for a nice snowshoe and just take in the nice crisp, like crisp air and enjoy the broad view of the stars. You can't, we definitely, I think, I think as Maritimers, I think we take that uh, sometimes for granted. Mm -hmm. Very true. <laughs> One of the other things I noticed on the, uh, the very long list of activities is there's a real, return this year to being able to do things for teens and tweens because over the past couple of years with restrictions and everything you couldn't do as many things for the youth to be able to actually get together but this year there's curling there's trivia there's two different dances it just when I looked through it I was like this once again the town knows how to hit things for seniors things for families things for teens often get overlooked and it just it jumped out to me that there was so many great activities specifically for that age group this year yeah we're we're again like we're so lucky to have amazing partners the boys and girls club of riverview they're organizing those two dances uh for both age groups uh, they're also organizing a uh, amazing race happening this first weekend in Mill Creek, um, and our youth collective volunteers, uh, they're offering the the um, youth curling that you mentioned, and uh, they're also doing that trivia night. They're actually also volunteering at the fireworks, um, and we have volunteers too from uh, Riverview High School. They're going to be doing the sound this Friday, so we're really trying to yeah, you, you hit it. Like we're trying to offer um, activities uh, and volunteer opportunities uh, for youth to get them more engaged and uh, uh, build that sense of belonging um, in their community. Well, you hit the nail on the head as a mom of a preteen who is very excited to attend her first dance. Uh, <laughs> definitely. I know her school for sure is all the rage. That's all they're talking about and, and planning. So that's awesome. really exciting. Yeah, you've done, you've done it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. That's fantastic. For anyone who's wondering, that's the uh, preteen dance ages 9 to 12 Thursday night at the Coverdale Center. And then on Friday night, uh, there's the teen dance for ages 13 to 15. So and you can find all those details. We should let people know if they're looking for the full schedule and for updates throughout the week, if they're wondering if, you know, the weather is impacting anything, where do people find all the information that they need, Ash? Uh, the best uh, the best place to go would be to visit online at uh, riverviewwintercarnival.ca. Uh, if you follow us on Facebook, uh, town of Riverview uh, will be updating there as well but uh, I would say mainly our website uh, our phone number too is 506-387-2024 love awesome. that you remember the 506 yeah <laughs> let's do that now right <laughs> yeah I got the message the other day telling me try again <laughs> still getting used to it 
Um, um, one thing that you mentioned at the very beginning, and and I just wanted to bring up before we go, is on the website too, you can find a list of the businesses that are taking part in the warm winter specials. And there is a really big list. Some businesses, uh, for example, Daisy's Fashion, 50% off of everything. That's crazy. Ooh. I know. I'm going shopping right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, there's really some great excited. meal specials in there too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's over 25 businesses, uh, and this is new for this year too, for 2023. We've never had a, a, a businesses offering uh, specials, so we're really excited. Uh, I would, if if folks are looking for more information um, about, you know, what the actual uh, special is, I would check out their Facebook page, like each individual business. Uh, or their uh, their website for those updates because they're mm -hmm. still they're still some of them are still thawing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, and I think some of them are like daily specials too. I think like the Homestead. I think mm -hmm. said they probably they'd have like a daily special during winter carnival time. And yeah, quite a few of the restaurants have have specials on the like you say thawing, waiting yes. <laughs> to be revealed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, so Ash, every year I like to put you on the spot and I want to know what your favorite event is. What are you really looking forward to? Oh, <laughs> that's a really tough one. Okay. This year, I think I got to go with the fireworks. It's, I mean, it's been almost three years since we've held them and uh, yeah, there's just, there's something there, you know, as an organizer, we spend months prepping for this and you hope the weather lines up and everything works out. And uh, I don't know, there's something about the fireworks. I, I spend some time watching the fireworks, but I also spend some time watching people's faces mm -hmm. and uh, just taking that in because for me, the carnival is really about um, helping folks create wonderful winter memories and getting people out and connecting and I gotta say, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it already. I think <laughs> definitely the fireworks is is my favorite, and I'm really looking forward to them. Us too. Yes, definitely. I I love the winter carnival fireworks because they happen at a reasonable time. <laughs> That's my favorite part about them. It's like 7 p.m. I'm like, I don't have to wait for midnight. It's not, you know, in the summer. It doesn't get dark till 10 o'clock at night if someone's doing, you know, Canada Day fireworks or something. So winter carnival fireworks, it's like, yeah, seven o'clock, bring it on. You can bring the kids and get them home at a decent time. And, you know, or just, you know, us old folks who are like, yeah, I don't, I don't go out late anymore. <laughs> yep. Seven o'clock fireworks works for me. <laughs> Yes, I gotta, I gotta add to, I have a, a two and a half year old daughter and uh, it's going to be her first time seeing fireworks this Friday. So I'm really, really excited about that. That is really oh. exciting. Well, you've done a wonderful job as per usual. Um, so one more time, let's give the website out before we wrap up the show today so that people can, can do uh, their planning over the next 10 days. Yeah, so all of the information is available online at riverviewwintercarnival.ca. And uh, if you're not able to visit the website, uh, you can phone us at 506-387-2024. Fantastic. Thanks again, Ash, for jumping on with us today to talk about uh, Winter Carnival. We kind of uh, threw it to you last minute because uh, we had to okay. make some changes because of, uh, you know, all those wonderful things that happen in the winter. But we very much appreciate you joining us today. I appreciate the opportunity anytime. Thank you for having me.